Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, City Councilors, City Administrators, and members of the gallery. First off, I'd like to thank all of you for your incredible stamina tonight. It's been a long one. Um, my name is, is Dia Vandenberg. I am a student at the University of Regina, and I'm a uh, member and founder of a student advocacy group, advocacy group called Regina Green Ride Transit Network. I'm joined by Brooke Patterson, the VP of External Affairs at the University of Regina Students' Union. We are also joined by members of our delegation in the gallery, community transit supporters, as well as several university students who have identified themselves in white to show their support for us in the UPASS campaign that we are launching. They've given up their evenings during midterms, and a lot of them have already left, but uh, the few that remain should show the dedication that we have for students who are in support of this. We are active users of the Regina Transit Network. I specify transit network to refer to the entirety of the transportation infrastructure within the city of Regina. That means personal vehicle, carpooling, walking, cycling, or using public transit, the bus. On my seven kilometer trip from my home to the university, to the university in any given week I might drive my car, take my, my bike, which is equipped with winter tires, or use the bus. My case is very similar to the 13,000 university students who do the same thing as us, commute to school, and are increasingly using different ways to trans to get to school. Sorry, more of us, more and more of us are using the bus. Today, we are here in front of you as a city of Regina Transit Network users to suggest that increased service to Regina Public Transit, starting with the university, will benefit all users of Regina's holistic transit network. Public transit is the lifeblood of any growing city. Regina is booming, and its public transit usage is following this growth. In meetings with Regina Transit over the past year, I've been given stats that represent this ridership boom. Since 2012, ridership in Regina's buses has increased 13.6%. This has been achieved without any increase of services for public transit. Currently, budget funds go to maintenance and purchase of new buses to replace old ones. The last dedicated funds to increase public transit service was back in 2011 for the Route 18 to Harbor Landing. There was a reshuffling of routes this past July to create new services like express routes and to address inefficiencies in its current routes. But all of this was done without any increase spending. Regina Transit has done an incredible job at running an effective bus service, even increasing ridership by over 13% without any increase in funding. Using existing resources to improve bus service is great, but resources can only go so far. Eventually, we will need more buses and a greater budget to service new areas or increase frequency. We would argue that that time is now. The city has already begun planning for the unprecedented growth that Regina and Saskatchewan is experiencing right now. Quoting from the Design Regina Official Community Plan. To be sustainable, a municipality must be forward-thinking, responsibly planning for the long term. For Regina, this means looking ahead by protecting land for growth to a population of 500,000. End quote. The City of Saskatoon has unveiled a similar plan called Growing Forward, Shaping Saskatoon, in which they too envision growth to a population of 500,000. I attended an urban design conference in Saskatoon about a month ago, where parts of this plan were elaborated upon. One of Saskatoon's directors of planning and development said explicitly, continuing to improve our public transit system, which at this point is public buses, is the cornerstone to the Growing Forward Growth Plan. So here's where the students come in. Um, the University of Regina is in a transportation crisis that can be alleviated by bus usage. The university recently began building a new residence which is currently occupying almost 500 parking spaces and will result in a permanent loss of over 250 spaces. With the U of R's continued growth, there's currently not enough parking at the university. Bottom line, students are looking for an alternative way to get to the university. The Students' Union, in conjunction with the Student Crop,
student group called Regina Green Rhine have become aware that the student body would like to implement a U-Pass to deal with commuting woos on campus. The U-Pass, or Universal Pass, is a bus pass for all student universities, or student, all university students, paid for by a per semester levy applied to all students. This is beneficial to the university as well as the city, as this levy allows for subsidized student bus pass, but also an increased bus rider population. There are over 30 universities in Canada that have implemented the UPAS structure, which has led to varying increases of municipal ridership from 20% to over 40% increase in some cases. The UPAS starts with students, but it positively impacts all users of transit. The University of Saskatoon, for example, passed the UPAS for undergraduates in 2008. As a result, the city of Saskatoon saw their ridership grow by over 20%. Since then, the UPass has been adopted by the U of S graduate students, a high school in the city, and there are current talks to expand it to more high schools as well as the SIAS in Saskatoon. The city of Regina would benefit from a UPass as it would help fill empty buses, which translates to a greater cost recovery for the city. Additionally, the UPass supplies a form of guaranteed revenue for the city. To elaborate, a successful UPass at the U of R, based on the current U of S rate, would mean that students would be contributing to Regina Transit an annual amount of approximately 1.46 million per fiscal year. This can go towards the purchase of buses, which will not only aid student-specific transit routes, but better service for Regina as a whole. This guaranteed annual revenue may also go towards better bus maintenance and overall improvements to the bus system. We, the students, view the UPass as a spark to ignite the transit network of this booming city Regina needs it if we want to grow, and the students want to help. Within the next year, we will be holding a referendum on the UPass question at the U of R, and we are confident it will pass. However, we've come here today to ask for your support for this cause by setting aside funding for student-specific bus services in advance of our referendum. The successful referendum and the $1.6 million which come with it can be ensured by showing the students that the city is on board with matching student investment with increased service. Particularly, we would like to ask for initial provision for five extra buses to be added to the fleet and designated for routes most used by students. At approximately $600,000 per new bus, this could be viewed as an upfront investment that will be greatly subsidized later by the UPAS implementation at the U of R. In addition to the increased ridership, the city benefits from the UPAS by guaranteed annual revenue and overall better transit service. We, on behalf of the students at the University of Regina, urge you, as those who lead us into this period of growth for Regina, to entrust, city, or to entrust Regina Transit with the funding to keep up with our current growth and to us, prepare us for Regina's future growth by investing in the expansion of public transit in the city. Thank you for your time, and I know it's getting late, but we do welcome any questions. Thank you very much for your presentation. You're right on time. We have questions, though, Council Price. Thank you. Are you aware that uh, the city in the past has encouraged the UPass system and in the past uh, there has been a vote at the university that did not pass with the students? And what are you doing to ensure that it does pass this time? Um, yes, we are aware of that. Um, however, you do think uh, a couple circumstances at the university have changed since then. Um, one, we have circulated a university-wide survey that has um, indicated favorable results towards the UPass. Um, a couple of the reasons why is um, the obvious population increase at the U of R, which is constraining um, parking, as well as the construction of the residence building, which is further constraining um, parking. Um, also, students' costs are continuing to going up, um, tuition, books, parking passes, gas, etc. So, they're looking for more low-cost alternatives now. And I also think there's also more of a push to move to sustainable transportation. Um, in terms of looking for getting students interested is we are starting now, basically. It's we are gathering up student interest now. We're not planning on another vote for about a year. So we're starting early this time and trying to prepare ourselves as well as possible. Thank you. Have you been working with our um, city departments as well to find out ways to go about that? Uh, yeah, I, I will elaborate on your previous question as well as answer that one. 
Uh, for the past almost year, we've been in uh, talks with members of the city council, as well as Regina Transit. Uh, included in those talks are members of University of Regina's administration. Um, University of Regina Provost Tom Chase was actually planning on joining us here tonight, he sends his regrets. He has been in on these meetings. That's one huge thing that has changed since the last referendum. We have support from the university administration, as well as the University of Student, uh, the University of the Students Union. Um, that was not necessarily the case, the case in 2009, when the last referendum happened. Another thing that has changed greatly since then is that the university in general has taken a, a greater stance towards sustainability, um, demonstrated by the implementation of the, the PACS Committee on Sustainability, of which uh, Dr. Chase sits. And as I mentioned, he has been very involved with us, as well as uh, members of the transit, or Regina Transit. Thank you. Thank you, Council Parks. Um, Council Dahl. Thanks, uh, nice to see you here. And I, like, uh, like the previous speaker, um, uh, I want to admit to some skepticism because of what happened last time. And, and just add one comment, we added four express routes to the university at that time of which did not survive or were not supported. My question to you is, uh, at that presentation, we also had a representation from SIAS. In other words, we tried to get our part tied together. Three, and you three, 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 three. Uh, yes, we have tried contacting SIAST um, to be joined in our meetings, but um, not really with any replies. I appreciate that, and I would certainly encourage you to do more. We'd certainly like to at least hear from them if it, if it works out. I'm also encouraged about the administration, so um, when you go to the UPAS, what are you looking at having the responsibility, responsibility to get SIAST involved? This will depend in large part on getting more um, collaboration with the city. We do not yet have a number to tell students about how much that uh, that semester rate will be. We're basing it right now on the U of S, which is approximately $73 a semester. When we have that number, um, we will try to implement a referendum date. We are hoping to do it either at the end of next semester, so fall 2014, or early um, winter 2015 semester, so a year from now. So we encourage you to speak with the administration and continue to have that discussion. Uh, other questions? Uh, there are none. Thank you very much. You can return to the gallery. And we'll move on to our next delegation.